What's going on Dividend Chasers? It's the Dividend Bloodhound here with another investing episode. In this episode we're going to talk about the BP stock and its upcoming earnings report and how it is going to hopefully get on for the future. I'm a shareholder myself, we're not sure whether the dividend is going to get cut at the moment, it's yield is currently in double digits but a lot of people think this is unsustainable so stick around for the rest of the video to find out my opinion on this as always if you like this video and it brings you some value please hit the like button in the corner just down here or if you're brand new to the channel i'm the dividend bloodhound and it'd be absolutely fantastic if you could hit that subscribe button and also ring that notification bell to get notified when i release great brand new content just like this that being said Let's get in there. Hello again guys, welcome into the video. As we mentioned, BP is a huge global oil company with interests all over the world and listed on numerous stock exchanges, including the New York Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange here in the UK. It's come under a lot of scrutiny just lately because it and Shell or RDSB make up a massive proportion of the oil company or energy companies over here in the UK in the FTSE 100. Shell recently cut its dividend from a yield that was double digits down to a forward yield of about 3.5% give or take. Now BP has yet to do this, so their yield is still massively high at over 10%, which I'll show you later on in this video and you'll see it in the graphics, which is absolutely enormous. And most people will argue based on the oil crisis that's happening at the moment, there is a huge glut and there's tons of it out there. It's dirt cheap at the moment, so there's no money to be, to be made on it. People aren't using it because of the health crisis and yet they're still trying to keep up with a dividend they were providing pre-crisis. Most people and most investors agree that this is unsustainable, but yet somehow BP is managing to limp on and carried on paying it last quarter. Uh, whispers suggest that it's not going to happen so much uh, this quarter. Their earnings haven't done so well, apparently, but this is yet to be confirmed. The earnings date actually comes out on the 4th of August, so in a couple of days time, roughly between 9 and 11 o'clock local GMT UK time. During this whole crisis, I haven't actually added to my BP position much at all. I've bought the odd share here and there, but based on the fact that they're only £3 a share, that really isn't a lot of money to add. I've reinvested all the dividends that I've had, but I haven't actually added to my position. I've tried to average it down a little bit because I'm roughly down 25% at the moment. But based on me not knowing what's going to happen with their dividend, it's kind of stopped me from investing in them at the moment. because I kind of want to see what happens to the share price when they actually announce that they're going to either suspend or trim back their dividends. Personally, I don't think it will have too much of an adverse effect because most people are of the opinion that this is just now factored into buying, but I'm just being slightly more cautious and waiting it out. I've already started investing in Royal Dutch Shell again because I believe in their long-term future and the way they are shifting towards being an energy company rather than just a oil company. And BP is actually doing the same. I just want to want them to like sort it out first before I start committing more money so I don't just keep adding to a de ever depreciating stock. That being said, their stock price has, hasn't has really depreciated that much in many years. The last time it depreciated badly and came down badly was in 2010 when the deep water horizon crisis happened. And this is also where they suspended their dividend for three quarters and cut it right back to its bare bones. And it took them about 18 months to recover from this and start paying a dividend again properly. But that dividend has been rising again year on year, uh, all the way until now basically. It took a slight trim back in 2017 I believe, but not by very much at all. And the, the, the yield is so big that it's kind of like inconsequential that they trim it back a touch here and there, as long as it keeps growing in the longer term, which it actually has. 
if this company can survive Deepwater Horizon and the disaster that that was for the company's finance and its PR, then I believe that it can come through this just as well, okay, and return to paying its, well, it hasn't even suspended or, or cut its dividends yet, but I believe it can keep going. It does have an awful lot of cash flow, but at the moment, with earnings being so, the price of oil being so low and earnings being so tight, I think a dividend cut is probably in the best interests of the company in terms of financial health of the company and us as investors as well. I'm happy to take a 35 to 4% yield off a company, no problem at all, especially based over here in the UK where that 3 or 4% is untouched by the taxman. Over in the United States, you have to go on for a much higher dividend yield because you've got to factor in that 15% dividend withholding tax, which is something a lot of investors sometimes neglect to think about. Anyway, that being said, I'm going to take us into trading 212 now and we'll actually have a look at some of the fundamentals of this company and where it's at right now. And then we'll have another discussion as we're going through that. And based on that, you've already seen that I'm waiting it out until I hear that they've actually cut their dividend or suspended it. And then I might carry on getting back in there and averaging down my position as well. Shall I'm confident with, so I've started reinvesting in them again. Uh, BP, I'm just sitting out and just investing a little bit here and there, reinvesting the dividends that they are paying, just waiting out for the news that they are actually going to suspend or cut their dividend or trim back. Anyway, let's get in there. Let's have a look. Catch you in there. Hello again, guys. Welcome into the app. As you can see, we have BP here. BP PLC lined up ready for you to look at. And as previously mentioned, you can see it's got operations all over the world in terms of fuel for transport, light, heat, power for industry, petrochemicals, like you name it, they produce it. They've got refineries all over the world. Anyway, we're here to look at the fundamentals. So let's have a look. So we have ticker symbol is BP. They have a current market cap of 59.25 billion, a PE ratio of 5.29, revenue of 214 billion, that is a colossal amount of money, earnings per share of 55p, and a dividend yield of 11.12%. So you can see what I'm saying with just how high that dividend yield is. And they have a total net income of four billion pounds last year year in 2019 as you can see that earnings was coming down before the health crisis hit they have a debt to assets ratio of 66 percent but this is now likely to go up due to you guessed it the health crisis and then we have as mentioned the dividend yield being over 11 percent and then we have Revenue over five years growing at 15%. That is really good, double digit growth. Over the last three years, that has came down a touch though. So we're talk talking minus 4.65%. But as you have already seen, their revenue is well over 200 billion. So they're clearly not struggling to sell the product. We've got earnings per share growth over five years at 219%, or over the three years at 0. minus 0.69%. And a five-year compound annual growth rate of 6.74%, which is not quite double digits, which is what a lot of people look for, but it's very close to that. And then we've got a, a three-year dividend growth rate of 3%, yields remaining pretty high as you've already as you've already seen. The yield has just crept up and up and up just recently away from where it was nice and sustainable beforehand. Now, if we go back to the actual share price, it's currently trading at £2.77 a share. Uh, it dropped peak crisis all the way down to £2.36, so it hasn't recovered all that much at the moment, and that's with good reason. Cruise ships are still tied up alongside. People aren't using their cars as much as they were still, and most aircraft are still grounded. You can see over the last year or so, the price, the share price was sitting around the £5 mark, just above, just below. Dips a little bit here and there, but mainly recovers to being around £5, and then it drops off the cliff here. And since then, it's been hovering around £2.70. 
then peaked up up there on the 7th of June at £3.66. My average price for my shares is around £3.77, I think, which is why I do need to concentrate on trying to average this one down. It's just about, I just want to find out what's going to happen to the share price first if they do enact a dividend suspension or a dividend trim or cut, whatever you want to call it. I just want to see what happens first. Personally, if I had to give my opinion, I don't actually think the price will change that much. I believe most people, as we've already talked about, are already factoring this one in. That being said, I'll wrap this bit up here and I'll see you back in the outside world. Hello again, guys. Welcome back to the real world. That was BP PLC then, or BP stock, whatever you want to call it. And I personally rate this company at the moment, along with most analysts, as a buy for the future. Um, I do plan on adding to my position bit by bit, as I've already told you, I'm reinvesting my dividends still in them. And then when I get a little bit of spare change here and there, they're only a few quid a share. So it makes sense to just add to them a little bit. What, as I've already said, needs to happen before I start committing bigger money again, is I need to know what's happening with that dividend. As soon as I know that, I can start getting back involved in it and start committing some significant money again to it to try and average down my position and then in the long term much like a lot of you guys out there i bet where you've lost some money potentially because you paid five pound a share you want to bring that average right down so when they do recover and it won't be a snap recovery this definitely isn't going to be a v-shaped recovery for oil price companies but as over the next three four five years continues and we get back to pre-crisis oil consumption then you'll see the share price recover to five pound you'll definitely make money that way and then you'll get the dividends along the way as well as well and they should continue to grow them as well that being said i could be completely wrong and they may find a way to sustain this incredible 11 percent yield and i'm not going to miss out on that because every time i every time i get a dividend from them i can buy another share so i will i won't gain as much as i could have but you can definitely still buy another share or two or three or four. And that happens every quarter as well. So that's a good way to actually continue growing your position in the company with almost free money, if you, if you understand what I'm saying there. I could never choose between RDSB or Shell and BP, hence why I own both. They're both so crucial to the UK energy sector and supply such a vast amount of products. I mean, petrol is just, petrol and diesel is just one small thing. They've got aviation fuel in there, cruise liner fuel, diesel, all of that side of things. And then there's all the petrol products as well. And I know people are also saying that it's a dying industry and it's time to get out. We are nowhere near. I know electric cars are fast becoming a thing and they are the in thing to invest in at the moment. But I can guarantee you, I can absolutely promise you that we are nowhere near done with our dependence on oil for trucks, for cars, for ships, for the, globe, the shipment of global, global logistics, all your things that you buy from the shop in terms of your televisions. They still have to get shipped across the world by enormous container ships. And we're nowhere near making an electric or battery powered container ship or battery powered aircraft for that instance as well. There's still quite a long future in oil, whether we like it or not. There's definitely that side of things to contend with. And then if you look at the way these two companies, or in this case, I'm gonna stick with BP. If you look at the way BP's future proofing themselves, they are definitely making themselves relevant for the future. Getting involved in buying renewables, buying solar panels, buying natural gas companies up so they can continue and diversify their revenue streams. And that is why I am not scared of holding companies like BP and Royal Dutch Shell. Now, if you were to ask me about Chevron over in the United States or ExxonMobil, these companies haven't started diversifying yet. They still have stuck to just producing oil. And that's fine for them because America might be a little bit slower on the uptake for electric cars and wean ourselves off fossil fuels but eventually they're either going to run out or they're going to be outlawed because they're doing so much damage to the environment. And then Exxon and Chevron will be so far behind the curve because BP and Shell and Total have already gone 
well ahead and diversified into all these different fields, they'll be at a significant disadvantage because of that. That is just my opinion, but if you do look at the cold hard facts, Exxon and Chevron really aren't looking towards the future at the moment. They're too busy concentrating on the products that are selling now, which is absolutely fine, and they're making an awful lot of money to do so. But Royal Dutch Shell and BP, and BP in particular in this case, yes, they're making tons and tons of cash off oil now, but they've also got one eye on the future as well to look for future revenue streams. And I think that is really, really important when considering investing in these companies definitely make sure that they've got one eye on the future. That being said, I'm going to wrap things up there. It's been absolutely great to speak to you in this video. A pleasure to do all the research. If this video has brought you some value, please hit the like button just down there. That would be incredible. If you're brand new to this channel, please also consider subscribing. And if you feel extra, extra nice, please hit that um, notification bell as well. That'd be absolutely fantastic. There's nothing left for me to say except thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next investing episode. Catch you later.